Hi there, I'm the Myth Keeper. Welcome back to my channel. Last week I tackled my regional deep dive on Osirian, a video that was much requested. So this week I'm going to be doing kind of a follow-on video to that one. This week I'm talking, I'm doing another religion video. I'm talking about the Osirianic Pantheon. And what's really cool about the Osirianic Pantheon is it's actually the exact same Pantheon as our real-world Egyptian Pantheon. So if you want to do some additional research, all you got to do is research actual Egyptian mythology, it's the same as in the game world. The game world's lore even makes reference to the fact that at some point in the history of the Pantheon, they receded from the world of Galarian and they started to invest a little more in other worlds, including our own. So that's really cool. This particular video is not a historical document. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the Assyrianic Pantheon in the context of the world of Pathfinder. That being said, if you know nothing at all about the Egyptian pantheon, this is actually a pretty decent primer. A lot of the mythology is just lifted wholesale from the ancient Egyptian mythology and is right here in the Pathfinder world. I think it's really interesting. Uh, I love this kind of stuff. Enjoy. The first pharaoh, Asgad I, under the guidance of the god king Nethys, founded the nation of ancient Assyrian at the dawn of the Age of Destiny. Though the people of Assyrian adopted the worship of other deities venerated in the inner sea region, they kept their faiths in the old gods as well. And temples to Nethys, Phrasma, and Sarenre sprang up alongside temples of Anubis, Isis, and Ra. As ancient Assyrian rose to heights of glory during its first and second ages, the old gods took less and less of a direct role in daily life. From the gods' perspective, the Age of Enthronement was humanity's time of triumph, so the ancient Assyrian gods retreated to their divine strongholds in the great beyond, though they continued to guide and protect Assyrian from afar. During the Kelashite Interregnum, Assyrian's foreign overlords launched a dedicated campaign to eradicate worship of the ancient gods and other trappings of pharaonic rule. Carvings were defaced, statues were toppled, and temples were razed. The restoration of native Assyrian pharaohs to the throne in the last century has reawakened interest in Assyrian's long history, along with renewed faith in the land's ancient divinities. The ancient Assyrian pantheon includes numerous deities and demigods, but the twenty gods I'm covering today are those whose faith are most prominent and widespread in Assyrian today. Ta. According to ancient Assyrian mythology, Ta is the creator of the universe. He is the artisan of the gods, a deity of creation and the arts, of architecture, invention, metalworking, and sculpture. Such is Ta's creative power that alone among the ancient Assyrian gods, he created himself. He is the fire beneath the earth, and earthquakes and tremors are said to be signs of his disfavor. Ta took Sekhmet, Ra's eldest and most ferocious daughter, to be his mate, and he has always been a steadfast ally of Ra. Although he normally remains aloof from divine politics, he has never claimed rulership of the pantheon as Ra has, he has come into conflict with Apep and Set when those gods have attempted to destroy his creations. Ta normally appears as a man wearing the wrappings of a mummy, with a simple skullcap on his head and holding a staff in his hands. At other times, Ta is depicted as a naked and deformed dwarf, and it is in this form that the Pamet dwarves of Assyrian venerate him. Ta is the patron of alchemists, architects, artisans, artists, bards, builders, carpenters, masons, metalworkers, shipbuilders, and anyone else who is involved in creative endeavors. Additionally, Ta is said to hear the prayer of all mortal worshippers, and he often intercedes with other gods on humanity's behalf. Ra. The High Lord of the Egyptian Pantheon is Ra, often considered the most powerful among the gods of the Pantheon, save perhaps for the aloof Ta, the elder creator of the cosmos, Ra is depicted as a powerful man, with the head of a falcon and a blazing solar disk above his head. He is the father of Bastet, Hathor, Mat, and Sekhmet, though he created many other Assyrian gods as well. His arch-enemy is Apep, and every night Ra must defend the sun against the serpent who seeks to consume it. According to myth, Ra ruled as the pharaoh of the gods during the Age of Creation. In this time, he took a great sojourn across the stars and left rulership of the Pantheon to the Lord of the Living, Osiris, the second greatest among their number. Because of his association with rulership and goodness, kings and pharaohs worship Ra as their patron, as do paladins and warriors battling against the forces of darkness. As the god of the sun, Ra is also venerated by commoners and farmers. Apep Said to dwell in the tenth region of night, Apep is the great enemy of the sun god Ra, and ancient Assyrians believe each sunrise but a temporary victory, for the devourer of dawn always waits to seize and consume the sun again and again. 
until one day, they say, the sun shall rise no more, and all shall be ended. Apep is a great golden serpent, miles long, and his crushing coils encircle the world. He also appears as a fearsome dragon with night-black scales. And across Osirian, evil dragons venerate him in this form. Apep's human cults are secretive, usually meeting at night or under the cloak of darkness. These evil sects keep themselves hidden from the public eye, lest they attract the unwanted attention of those who follow the benevolent gods. Osiris Osiris is considered the second high lord of the Pantheon, and he inherited rulership during Ra's sojourn. It's probably obvious from the name, but Osiris is the god for which the nation of Osirian is named. And some versions of the legends report that during the Age of Legend, Osiris himself ruled Osirian as its king. In any case, he was a lord of the underworld before he took over as high lord among the gods, and he is associated with both death and life, but especially with resurrection, and as we'll get to, he was famously resurrected himself. Osiris always appears wrapped up like a mummy, but with green skin symbolizing his role as a god of fertility. He wears a white crown with two ostrich feathers and carries a crook and flail, the symbols of pharaonic rule. Osiris is the brother of Set and the husband of Isis. As a death god, Osiris is tightly aligned with the likes of Pharasma and Anubis, but his brother Set remains his sworn enemy. The most enduring myth about Osiris pertains to his murder. When Osiris became pharaoh of the gods, his brother Set became jealous of him and coveted his throne. So Set killed Osiris, dismembered his brother's body, and scattered the pieces across the world. Osiris's wife, Isis, gathered up the pieces, and using her magic, she brought her husband back to life. Because of his central place in the pantheon, Osiris is worshipped by all sorts in Assyrian. But clerics, druids, and paladins make up the bulk of Osiris's priesthood today. Isis Isis is the sister of Nephthys and the wife of Osiris. As High Lady of the Pantheon, she is often considered the greatest among the goddesses of the Pantheon. When Isis's husband, Osiris, was murdered by his own brother Set, it was she who recovered Osiris' body. And using her magic, she conceived a son with her dead husband, Horus. Enraged, Set then dismembered Osiris' corpse and scattered the remains, but Isis gathered up all the pieces, and with a magic spell, she resurrected him. Isis ruled as a queen alongside Osiris during the Age of Legend, and like him, she is a fertility and nature goddess, viewed as the ideal mother and wife. She is also a deity of magic, both arcane and divine. Isis appears as a beautiful human woman with winged arms, wearing a crown shaped like a throne. She is the loyal wife and partner of Osiris, and is fiercely protective of her son Horus. Isis is worshipped by sorcerers, wizards, and witches as a patron of magic, but also by mothers, wives, and druids in her role as a goddess of fertility. As a goddess closely associated with femininity, a vast majority of her clerics are women. Horus Horus is the son of Isis and Osiris, conceived unnaturally by Osiris while the god-king was still in a state of death. He is the prodigal son of the Osirianic pantheon a consummate adventurer who at times both defied his parents and rose to great challenges and proved himself when it mattered the most. Horus faced off against his father's murderer, Set, and with his victory over the lord of the dark desert, Horus became the rightful heir of Osiris. Horus took his father's place as pharaoh and ruled the pantheon with his own consort Hathor during the Age of Anguish, becoming also a king among gods. Horus appears as a man with the head of a falcon, wearing the traditional double crown of pharaohs called the Pshent. His symbol, the Eye of Horus, is used to ward off evil, and the symbol commonly appears on protective amulets and trinkets. Horus is worshipped by kings and pharaohs, as well as by paladins, and by hunters, rangers, and explorers of all sorts. He is sometimes venerated as part of a triad with Osiris and Isis, or as one half of a royal couple with his consort Hathor, but there are temples dedicated solely to Horus as well. Hathor Hathor is the youngest of the four daughters of Ra, and sister to Bastet, Mat, and Sekhmet. She is the consort of Horus, and as he is a god of kings, so she is a goddess of queens, though she is venerated by royalty and commoners alike. Hathor appears as a voluptuous cow-headed woman with the solar disk of her father Ra between her horns, carrying a sistrum. A divinity of air and sky, Hathor is also a goddess of beauty and love, happiness and merriment. She is the queen of the dance, the mistress of music, and the sovereign of song. Hathor is a wife, a mother, and a lover, a goddess of fertility, sexuality, and motherhood. 
She is also a goddess of trade and goods that bring wealth from foreign lands. Hathor is a patron and protector of women and is worshipped by mothers, wives, and lovers of all ages. She also serves as a patron of bards, dancers, musicians, and performers, which make her a popular deity in thriving cities and their playhouses. In her role as a goddess of trade, Hathor is also a patron of miners, particularly those who mine for precious stones. Hathor's priesthood is predominantly female, and her temples hold great festivals full of music and dance, where worshippers consume large amounts of beer and wine and revel for days on end. Sekhmet Sekhmet is the eldest daughter of Ra, and the sister of Hathor, Mat, and Bastet. Sekhmet is a goddess of war and vengeance, but she has another side as well. She is also a goddess of healing, who wards off plagues and pestilence. She heals warriors of their wounds, and is especially revered for curing fractures. As the daughter of Ra, Sekhmet is also a goddess of fire. Sekhmet is the wife of Ta, a being who is ancient and venerable even compared to her father, and this relationship with the older god sometimes elevates her importance relative to her siblings. Sekhmet appears as a woman with the head of a lioness, wearing a long dress soaked red with blood. The most enduring legend of Sekhmet tells of a time when the sun god Ra's human subjects rebelled against him, so he sent his daughter Sekhmet to punish them. Going further than was planned, Sekhmet took on the task with such fury that Ra feared she would exterminate the human race entirely. In order to save humanity and end the destruction, Ra filled jugs with beer and pomegranate juice and scattered them across the battlefield. Thinking the red liquid was human blood, Sekhmet greedily consumed every drop she could find, quickly becoming so drunk that she was unable to continue the slaughter. The story speaks of the unquenchable nature of her vengeance and her sheer power and ferocity. Despite this grim legend, she is not an evil deity, and she has all manner of worshippers. Barbarians revere Sekhmet for her destructive rages, and both fighters and maguses worship her as their patron in battle. Sekhmet's priests are both male and female, and are skilled warriors as well as healers. Bastet Bastet is the second youngest daughter of Ra, and the sister of Hathor, Mat, and Sekhmet. Bastet was a popular deity in ancient Assyrian, worshipped as a goddess of cats, and a deity of celebration, pleasure, and secrets. While her sister, Hathor, is a goddess of love, Bastet is one of desire and sensuality. She also guards against contagious diseases, evil spirits, and snakes, and is associated with protective ointments and perfumes. A beautiful woman with the head of a cat, she is both a protector and a teller of tales. Normally indolent and relaxed, Bastet can be fierce when roused to anger, and she is often faced off against the great serpent Apep on behalf of Ra. A promiscuous goddess, Bastet has no mate, but numerous stories detail her liaisons with other deities. Bastet is a popular goddess among bards and women of all classes, and she is the patron of spies, rogues, and thieves. Most of her clerics are women, though men are welcome in the priesthood too, and both genders work as sacred prostitutes in Bastet's temples, which host elaborate festivals replete with dancing, drinking, and revelry. Devotees of Bastet often keep cats as pets. Mat. Mat is the second eldest of the daughter of Ra, sister of Bastet, Hathor, and Sekhmet, and the wife of Thoth, the god of science, mathematics, and philosophy. Indeed, of all of Ra's daughters, Mat was always the most cerebral, much more introverted than mighty Sekhmet or joyful Hathor, and more so even than mysterious Bastet. It is said that when the universe was created, it was given an innate harmony. And because of her natural patience and wisdom, Ra gave his daughter Mat the responsibility of being the guardian of that cosmic order. She is a deity of balance, justice, law, and truth, and is responsible for the uniform movement of the celestial bodies through the sky and the ordered procession of seasons. Mat presides over a council of the gods, being impartial, honest, and fair, and she assists Phrasma in the judgment of souls as they pass into the afterlife. As the upholder of cosmic order, Mat is opposed to both Set and Apep, who work to bring about chaos and entropy. Mat usually appears as a woman with a blue ostrich feather in her head, she is often depicted with winged arms, holding an ankh and a scepter, symbols of life and power, respectively. Her sacred animal is the leopard, because the pattern on its coat represents the stars in the night sky. Paladins often worship Mat as the embodiment of justice, and monks and oracles revere the cosmic truth she embodies. Thoth It is said all knowledge and wisdom comes from Thoth, the god of science, mathematics, history, philosophy, religion, and wisdom. He is also a god of the moon and magic particularly arcane magic. Thoth is also the patron of language, literature, and writing, and is said to have invented the hieroglyphs first used by ancient Assyrian scribes and that are still used in modified form in the modern Assyriani language today. 
Thoth normally takes the form of a man with the head of an ibis. He is the husband of Mat, the goddess of order and truth, and he serves as secretary and counselor to Ra. It was Thoth who gave Isis the magic words she used to resurrect her dead husband Osiris. He is the scribe of the gods, and mediates between them fairly in their disputes. Thoth is a patron of archivists, scribes, researchers, and scholars, and alchemists, witches, and wizards all worship him as the god of magic and spells. His temples usually include well-stocked libraries and archives, and often include an order of monks who venerate him for his knowledge and wisdom. Set Of all the deities of the ancient Assyrian pantheon, none is as hated and reviled as Set. He represents the foreign invader, the desert that encroaches upon the verdant banks of the river Sphinx, the storms that destroy crops and sink ships, and the dead that rise from their graves. He is evil personified, the enemy of all that is good, a god of sickness and disease, confusion and madness, rebellion and strife. He is a usurper, a murderer, and a stealer of souls. Set is the brother of Osiris, and husband of Nephthys. With Nath, from a relation had out of wedlock, Set is also the father of Sobek. As discussed earlier, Set famously murdered Osiris, mutilated the body, and scattered the pieces, and tried to steal his brother's throne. In Osiriani mythology, this event is what actually ushered in the Age of Darkness. Set is to blame for the Earthfall Cataclysm in some way, or so they claim. Set is the enemy of both his brother Osiris and his nephew Horus, who, according to legend, defeated Set in order to avenge his father's murder. But despite being defeated and Horus's ascension to God Pharaoh, Set endures still, and likely continues to plot against his enemies. Set appears as a lean Osirian man with the head of a shah. Kinslayers, murderers, and usurpers all pay homage to Set, but he is also venerated by kings and pharaohs who value the god's cunning strength and power. Set is a patron of assassins, rogues, and necromancers, and he is worshipped by barbarians, warriors, and evil druids as well. Nath. Nath is a goddess of war and hunting, but also of domestic arts such as weaving. She stands guard over the bodies of fallen soldiers and is responsible for teaching humanity how to make the weapons of war. From her loom, she also weaves bandages and shrouds for wounded or slain warriors. A divinity of creation, Nath is said to weave the world on her loom every day, though Ta and Ra are more usually venerated as creators. Nath is also a water deity, and she is a goddess of the oceans that surround Osirian. A significant myth surrounding Nath concerns her encounter with Set. It is said, while on a long hunt in the desert, Nath encountered Set, and their liaison resulted in the birth of a son, the crocodile god Sobek. Nath is respected for her wisdom, and on many occasions has served as mediator between Horus and Set. Nath appears as a woman wearing a red deshret crown. She is also occasionally depicted wearing armor, and always carries a bow and arrow. Hunters, rangers, sailors, smiths, soldiers, and warriors all worship Nath as their patron. Clerics of Nath are usually skilled smiths or weavers, or both, and like their goddess, they do not marry. Sobek Sobek is the son of Nath and Set, and therefore cousin to both Horus and Anubis. While Sobek has on occasion supported his father, Sobek more often stands alone. He has no wife, but he lusts after Ta's wife, the war goddess Sekhmet, and expends great effort trying to impress her with his strength and potency. The crocodile god Sobek is a god of rivers, marshes, and fertility, of both creatures and vegetation. Violent, aggressive, and prone to primal urges, Sobek is also a god of battle, venerated for his ferocity, strength, and military prowess. Sobek appears as a muscular man with the head of a mighty crocodile, wearing a headdress with tall plumes, curling horns, and a solar disc. He is a patron of soldiers and armies, and he is worshipped by barbarians, druids, fighters, rangers, and warriors as well. Farmers often give offerings to Sobek so that he will enrich their fields and protect their livelihood. Sobek's temples are almost always situated on riverbanks and are rarely found more than a few miles from a river. The crocodiles living near these temples are exalted by the priesthood and are often considered the direct offspring of the god. Most of his temples contain pools holding crocodiles sacred to Sobek, and their regular feeding is incorporated into worship. Nephthys Nephthys is the sister of Isis, and also the wife of Osiris's evil brother, Set. As her husband and brother Set is the god of darkness and deserts, Nephthys is the goddess of night and the edge of the desert, the border between civilization and wilderness. As a goddess of borderlands and transitions, she is also considered a funerary deity. She is worshipped both as a protector and a mourner of the dead. 
She is not considered to be an evil deity in the same way her husband is, and many turn to Nephthys for comfort in times of loss. Furthermore, although she is Set's wife, Nephthys does not normally support her husband, instead siding with her sister Isis and her husband Osiris in most conflicts. Following Osiris' murder at the hands of Set, Nephthys grieved along with Isis, and helped her sister gather the scattered pieces of Osiris' dismembered body. She also, it is said, nursed and protected the young Horus in his youth. One enduring legend about Nephthys tells of her lamenting to Set's brother Osiris that Set had never had the fortune to bless her with children. Her pain was compounded by the fact that Set had sired a child with Nath, the goddess of the hunt, by this time. As Osiris listened thoughtfully to Nephthys' grievance, it is said she cunningly plied him with wine so as to seduce him. As a result of this tryst, Nephthys and Osiris are the parents of Anubis. Nephthys does not usually have temples of her own, though she is often represented in churches of Anubis, Isis, and Osiris, or more rarely, alongside her husband Set in his temples. These small shrines are available for worshippers to leave their goddess small offerings and offer her prayers. Clerics of Nephthys assist other priests at funerals, including those of Phrasma, and often work as professional mourners. Anubis Virtually every Osirian tomb contains images of the jackal-headed god Anubis, the god of mummification and protector of tombs. He presides over funerals and embalming, and guides souls to Phrasma to await their judgment in the afterlife, punishing tomb robbers and defending the dead on their journeys to the boneyard. Anubis is the son of Osiris and Nephthys, and therefore the older half-brother of Horus, who is the current god-pharaoh of the Pantheon. As the son of Osiris and the brother of Horus, he commands an important position in the Pantheon, and Horus consults with him often on various deific matters. Also, despite being born out of wedlock, he remains close with Isis, who is both his aunt and the true married wife of his father. As a child, he learned from her often, as Isis and Nephthys remained close as sisters despite the infidelity. It is said that after Set killed his father, Anubis assisted Isis with Osiris's mummification. Like his father, Anubis frequently comes into conflict with Set, particularly regarding that god's association with undeath. As a guardian of the dead and their tombs, Anubis frequently works with Isis, Nath, Nephthys, and Selket, who protect the canopic jars containing the organs of the deceased. Anubis usually appears as a man with jet black skin and the head of a jackal. Clerics and paladins of Anubis are dedicated to destroying undead creatures wherever they find them. Anubis is the patron of embalmers, and priests and embalmers typically wear jackal masks that cover their entire heads in honor of their god. Selket The deserts of Assyrian contain many species of venomous scorpions, and the scorpion goddess Selket is both a protective and punitive deity, healing venomous bites and stings and afflicting the wicked with their own deadly sting. Selket is the sister of Nath, the huntress, and is close with her, but also with the sisters Isis and Nephthys. She is, in fact, often paired with her sister Nath at worship. It is said that after Set murdered Osiris, Selket took the form of seven scorpions and guarded Isis when Isis was pregnant with Horus. When a woman later refused the expectant mother's shelter, it was Selket who punished the woman for turning Isis away. Selket is said to also guard the other ancient Assyrian gods against the poisonous bites of a pep, and has assisted Ra on numerous occasions in his battles with him. Selket normally appears as a woman wearing a scorpion with a raised tail on her head, or more rarely as a lustrous black scorpion with the head of a woman. Selket's priests are commonly found working as healers and embalmers in towns and villages. The goddess has few temples, but she is sometimes worshipped in the shrines of Anubis, Isis, Nath, or Nephthys. Bess Bess appears as an ugly, bandy-legged dwarf, with large head, big eyes, full beard, and an open mouth with a comically protruding tongue. He wears a headdress of ostrich feathers and a lion-skin cloak. Bess has no direct relations among the other gods. As the guardian of marriage and a protector of households, Bess has a wide appeal through all levels of Assyrian society, and most houses, rich or poor, have a statue or carving of Bess to watch over the family and household. An amiable and inclusive deity, Bess encompasses all types of families under his protection, and is both a god of childbirth and a defender of children. Bess has few temples and ordained priests, but his joviality makes him popular among bards, professional performers, and serving boys and girls who view him as a patron of music, dance, and laughter. And such worshippers frequently wear small tattoos of Bess for protection and luck. Wajet The great river Sphinx, the heart of Assyrian life in both ancient and modern times, is embodied in the snake goddess Wajet, who is said to dwell in the papyrus marshes in the river's delta. 
Wajet is the patron and protector of Assyrian, and she nourishes the kingdom as the river Sphinx sustains the land and its people. Wajet appears as a woman with the head of a cobra, with winged arms outspread in a protective pose, or as a winged cobra with a woman's face, raised and ready to strike in defense of her land and people. Although she has no direct blood relations with others in the pantheon, as a protector of kings, Wajet supports Ra and Horus as deities of rulership, but as the guardian of all Assyrian, she works with Kepri to protect the common folk as well. Although she has temples in many of Assyrian's major cities, countless smaller shrines to Wajet stand along the banks of the river Sphinx. Oracles are particularly common in Wajet's priesthood, and the pharaohs of Assyrian have long looked to them for insight and counsel. Kepri Perhaps the most popular of the old gods among the common folk of Assyrian is Kepri, who takes the form of a scarab or dung beetle. Kepri is the god of the rising sun in the eastern horizon, and the scarab rolling a ball of dung across the ground is seen as a symbol of Kepri pushing the sun across the sky. As the sun rises in the morning, so do the peasants who work all day with little reward, and Kepri is their divine embodiment, promising freedom from toil and reward for their labor in the afterlife. He is also a mischievous prankster, breaking up the tedium of the long days with his antics and poking fun at those who consider themselves the commoners better. Kepri is typically represented as a scarab beetle, or as a man with a scarab beetle for a head. As a solar deity, Kepri works closely with Ra and Horus. He is friendly with Hathor and is opposed to Apep and Set and their evil machinations. As a trickster, Kepri is close friends with Bez, and he relishes the distaste that his strange appearance, his pungent aroma, and all that he represents elicit in more refined and civilized gods such as Bastet, Mat, and Thoth. Kepri seldom has dedicated temples, but, as a patron of peasants, his priests can be found anywhere the common folk labor. Temporary shrines to the scarab god often spring up next to fields or building sites where workers make small offerings of a bite of their food or a sip of their beer and ask Kepri to grant them an easy and productive day of work. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was informative and interesting. If you liked what you saw, please be sure to like and subscribe. And if there's anything more that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.